Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be going through some of my old CVs, critiquing them and then I'll be offering up some tips on how to improve your own CV. This first CV is the one I wrote back in November 2012 when I was applying to the big companies. As you can see, this CV sucks pretty hard. It's really, really bland and not much information on it, mainly because I just couldn't think of much to write. To fill up as much space, I really expanded on my education stuff and also list out a whole load of new projects, which was really all I had. I was fortunate enough to put some engineering summer experience and I think this does go a long way to helping you stand out. I also added in some other non-engineering related experience just to fill up some space. Generally this CV is pretty damn bad, I wouldn't hide myself and I think I only ever went to one assessment day. This second CV was written in 2013 after I had been rejected by all the big companies. Um, not sure why the formatting in this is all screwed up. but. Yeah, just make sure you double check this and sort this thing out before you send it out. This CV is pretty much the same except I took out my uni projects and expanded on the attributes. Still not a good CV by any means. This next CV is when I was applying for Hydrock after about just under a year's experience. The style is very similar to what I still use to this day and is actually a pretty good except for this spelling mistake. So now I'm just going to offer some general tips. So my first tip is avoid showing a photo, companies want to avoid discrimination. Also keep your CV to two pages maximum, it keeps the information concise. Use wide margins and a smaller font to fit more content onto the page. You want your CV to read easily so it should really flow. I'm not really a fan of CVs with information in like borders, I like reading a CV from top to bottom without having to flick around to find information but that's kind of just my personal preference. Um, spelling mistakes and grammar is a big no-no. Check and recheck before your PDF. I mean, like I just showed you previously, like I obviously didn't check my CV before I sent it out. So it can leave a very, very bad impression if, you've, if your CV is like filled with spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes. So for the heading, just make sure you put your name, your title, and any sort of qualifications. Like I have, I've put my current job title is Associate Structural Engineer and I've put my qualification which is my chartership so chartered uh, with the, uh, not D, the Institution of Civil Engineering and also just putting in some contact details, um, address, telephone number, email address and date of birth. Now the personal summary I find this section a little bit pointless because when I review a CV I, I generally don't really read it, maybe just a very very quick skim. Uh, a short summary is more than enough just to give a flavour to the reader of who you are and what you are looking for in a new job. Your academic qualifications, keep this short and sweet, doesn't need to take much space. Um, university is probably the most important part of your degree, um, so make sure you write your degree classification and your years spent there. Um, because I have a little bit of space next to it, I added in my higher education grades, but in all honesty, if I'm reading a CV, I don't really care. Under employment history, emphasise your current position and explain in short what you do and what your responsibilities you have. List your previous employment but doesn't need to be in as much detail. Make sure you show the dates of your employment. There's no point in explaining what you did as a graduate engineer if you're applying for like a much senior role. Um, likewise, you don't need to put down job experience um, when you did, say, you know, packing bags in Sainsbury's 10 years ago. Your recent projects or recent work is probably the most important bit and where employers will be looking at the most, well I would be anyways. Job experience trumps most things so having a broad range of relevant project experience is going to be really really important. Make sure you don't over exaggerate your involvement in a project, if you were only the graduate don't say you were like the lead engineer. In an interview I'll be asking a lot of questions about the projects and it can be very obvious to employers if you're lying or over egging it. It's okay to exaggerate a little bit, but just don't overdo it. This section is a great place to showcase a wide range of experience. Don't have five projects on schools, have maybe one or two. You want to demonstrate a wide range of experience, so showcase projects where you've designed a concrete frame, steel frame, you know, other sectors like education, university, a, plow a towel block, or a basement or refurb project. I show projects in the most recent order, even though I don't put any dates in it. I also show the rough construction value of the project and it's an easy indicator to the size of the project. Although big isn't always better, throw in some smaller projects too. 
Under structural engineering attributes, it's good to list out what kind of software you use, but actually make sure you only put down software you have experience in, and it's probably a good place to put how much experience you've got in it. Under professional attributes, this is probably where you just put some very, very generic attributes, which probably relate to any sort of profession. And then under personal attributes, kind of like the summary paragraph, I think it's a little bit bullshit, but put a few bullet points in there if you've got them. Under additional information, if you can drive, definitely put that down here. And especially if you've got a clean driver's license, you will need to be going to site very often as an engineer. So having a driver's license is essential in my opinion, unless you work somewhere like London where driving is actually really, really inconvenient. Any additional languages that you speak is also worth putting down, especially if you're applying to work for a firm that does a lot of international work. You never know when that could come in handy. If you have the space, you can put your references down here. If you don't like me, then just say available on request. They'll likely request your references regardless if you put them on your CV anyways. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you want your CV reviewed, I'd be happy for you to get in touch. All you gotta do is remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.